But it was younger than that. Oh, because you didn't record. <laughs> Oh, this was Good interesting. Morning, uh, Good morning. Grass hungry animals of medieval Europe often resorted to nibbling on leaves and twigs of shrubs, even low lying trees. From an old term for a young shoot, the deer or ox that ate such stuff was said to browse. Farmers who took their stock with them into the American frontier were sometimes hard pressed in winter after the hay was exhausted, cattle were turned out to browse. The nature of the coarse prevent provender was such that a browsing animal seldom ate steadily at one spot. Instead, there was sporadic nibbling and much moving about from place to place in search of something better. It was probably an author, huffy over treatment of his books, who first compared half-hearted readers with cows moving from shrub to shrub. Once the vivid resemblance was seen, however, it quickly became proverbial. As a result, Many a library that owns neither a cow nor a goat is equipped with a special room for use by patrons who like to browse. Hmm. Interesting. Amazing how words get, uh, get in our, our language. The Simpsons creator, Matt Gronick, um, named the characters Homer, Marge, Lisa, Maggie after his real life father, mother, and two sisters. The Simpsons uh, hometown of Springfield is named after Gronick's hometown of Springfield, Oregon. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And we do have a couple patron saints by the name of George Carlin and John Lennon. Yes, George, 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 George John. All right. And John says reality leaves a lot to the imagination. <laughs> <laughs> True, too. And um, George said something that's equally <laughs> poignant, I suppose. Don Ho can sign his autographs 3.4 times faster than Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Probably true. It is a shorter name. Yes, yes. And... It, yep, I did that one. Do illiterate people get the full effect of alphabet soup? <laughs> Did you ever notice that when you blow in a dog's face, he gets mad at you, but when you take him on a car's ride, he sticks his head out the window? <laughs> Does pushing the elevator button more than once make it arrive faster? <laughs> and do you ever wonder why you gave me your email address in the first place? <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. Little kids. When you love somebody, your eyelashes go up and down and little stars come out of you. <laughs> Karen, age, eight, yeah, age seven. And you really shouldn't say, I love you, unless you mean it. But if you mean it, you should say it a lot. People forget. <laughs> Jessica, age eight. And this is, the, this is the last one. Uh, author and lecturer uh, uh, Leo Biscaglia uh, once had a contest to see who was the most caring child. And this one came out number one. Um, a four-year-old whose next door neighbor was an elderly gentleman who had recently lost his wife. Upon seeing the man cry, the little boy went into the old gentleman's yard, climbed onto his lap, and just sat there. When his mother asked what he, what he had said to the neighbor, the little boy said nothing. I just helped him cry. Aww. I actually got through it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to stop and pause for a moment, so. Okay. Um, yeah. Lori, I don't think I can do that one. I don't think so, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Lori's fault. I didn't even ask Jan because she'd say no anyway. <laughs> Uh, a small boy is sent to bed by his father. Five minutes later, Dad, what? I'm thirsty. Can you bring me a drink of water? No, you had your chance. Lights out. Five minutes later, Dad, what? I'm thirsty. Can I have a drink of water? I told you no. If you ask again, I'm going to spank you. Five minutes later, Dad, what? When you come in to spank me, can you bring me a drink of water? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, for one thing, hey, you know what? 
William and Sandra is having are having an anniversary today. <laughs> Made it another year. Made it another year. How many? Twenty-five. Cool. Cool. So who who puts up with who? <laughs> So why don't you stand, William and Sandra, if you would, and let's all just send them a blessing, um, whatever that looks like to you. on the board of directors. He's been a board member for God knows how long. Oh, 10 I years think we've maybe? Lost Since he's been in this building, I yes. think, at least. I mean, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and before he was on the board, Lori was on the board. So the two of them have been such a blessing to us and will continue to be such a blessing to us. Um, I just, we just want to thank them for their years of service and Daryl for holding down the fort. And if you'd give him a big round of applause, that would be great. And Roy and Carol, if you'd come up front, please. <laughs> so as, as so no matter who, who a changing of the guard. Is, always the spouse is in there with them. <laughs> oh, no, not anything near that. You'd, you'll have to wait for that one. Um, <laughs> so to take his place, uh, Roy Bowman has been so kind to uh, receive that position. And Carol is uh, you know, a right-hand man, happy to be of support. So um, he's already started to do some things for us. Um, we'll be having a new bench for the Labyrinth delivered on Monday. So, uh, so no more rickety wood bench, just concrete. Concrete. No. Uh, people on uh, YouTube also. I won't tell you what the song is, but we'll tell you what it is afterwards, and you can go listen to it if you would like. But uh, it's a wonderful song for mothers, so we'll go ahead and play it. Anyway, YouTube. Uh, you played CeeLo Green's You Make Me Crazy. with that feminine parent. So I want to walk us through a guided meditation today to give us a chance to maybe move through some things. 
And this is different than we've ever done before, so, so bear with me. <laughs> you know, gosh, what's normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> what I'd like us to do, I'm going to walk you through guided meditation first. And what I want you to do is I want you just to reflect and be, and be aware of that mother energy. And there may be something that you wished you had received but didn't. Or maybe as a mother or a parent, wished you'd given but didn't. I want you to find the piece that's missing. If there's no pieces missing, God bless you. <laughs> Hang on to that. Find a quality that you really loved and want to amplify. Because after we come out of the guided meditation, here's what we're going to do. You're going to write a word down on a piece of paper. There's usually no cards in the, in the pews ahead of you, and for those in the back, we'll get you one. And I want you to, that's that quality that you feel like maybe you wish you had had more of that. Or maybe it was just gone altogether. <clears throat> or maybe it's the quality that you really received and you just want to honor it and recognize it and remember it more. And then we're going to have you come up and we're going to, there's going to be four of us up front, and we're going to hold a flower, hold a rose for you. Roses have the highest ener energy vibration of all flowers on the planet. And they're all about love, all aspects of love. So if you felt that you didn't receive appreciation by staring at the rose or looking at the rose, and the rose is vibrating at this highest frequency of love, connecting in the person who's holding the rose in your cap is connecting in with spirit and is going to channel or draw in that energy and imbue it into the rose. So the person that is giving you the rose is going to read what you have on the card. Nobody else has to know about it. Everybody else is sitting in the audience. You're just holding sacred space until it's your turn. And when you feel like you've received <coughs> or acknowledged or recognized that aspect, then you can receive the rose and go sit down and we'll do four at a time. Does that make sense? So let's do our guided meditation first, shall we? So we don't usually do it this way, but for today. <coughs> Deep breath in. And exhale. Deep breath in. And exhale. One more. Deep breath in. And exhale. And allow yourself to find your center. That core of your being. And from that core of your being, allow your heart space to open. As your heart space opens, you realize that you are love. You're not perfect, but you're a loving being. And that you are connected to divine love. Every aspect, all aspects, and with that awareness, bring your attention to the top of your head. There is an energy portal there. This is your willingness to connect with spirit. And there are many <coughs> energy portals over the top of your head. And you will intuitively know which one is the right one for you today. And as you access that, as you receive that energy, Living light of love will flow down into the top of your head. Love in full measure. Without restraint. Without human frailty. Pure love. And as you receive that love, let that love flow down into your, your mind. Letting it bless your mind. Releasing any sorrow or fear. 
fear of loss or regret. You don't have to carry on to carry that. It just displaces letting more and more love and light flow into your heart space now. And with your energy, this energy, this beautiful, loving light flowing into your heart space, we're going to take a little walk. We're going to take a little walk on a, a little pathway. And notice that there are little wildflowers growing along the pathway. They may be growing on the right side of the pathway. They might be growing on the left side of the pathway. They might be growing on both sides of the pathway. Whatever you experience is what is right for you for now. Just be aware of them. And as you're walking along this pathway, let's invite a beautiful living being of love to come and walk with you. Whether that's Jesus, the Christ consciousness, or an angel, or a spirit guide, or a spirit animal. There is a being that will walk with you to protect you, give you strength, give you comfort, and to help you feel love. And as you're walking along, off in the distance you'll see the presence of your mother. Whether you had a wonderful relationship with her or a not wonderful relationship with her, as you see her in the distance, you see the energy that she was, that she is, without judgment on your part, just allowing her to be. And in this moment, as you acknowledge her, you can draw her closer if you'd like, or you can allow her to stay in the distance, whichever feels right to you. But look into your being and notice what energy you long for. Maybe it's a, a, a memory that you long for, you would like more of that. Maybe it's something that was absent in your, in your childhood. But recognize that line and allow that mother energy. Perhaps there's something you'd like to say to her. Perhaps not. Just allow yourself to be whatever feels right to you. And she will turn and walk away. And you and your spirit guide or spirit animal, whichever, will turn and walk away in the other direction. And you allow yourself to find your way back here into this time and space, back into the here and now, with a sense of wholeness and understanding and wisdom and compassion. So you might want to take a deep breath in. And exhale, stretch a little bit. You want to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. And as that energy crystallizes, that, that which you would like to acknowledge or understand or or have more of, or, or have gifted to you. Please write that down on a piece of paper. Um, can I get somebody to bring parts of paper to the ones that need it?
Daddy, be careful when I just have thorns. <laughs> Should I just stab you? Sorry. So when you're ready, um, just do it four at a time. Tracy, where's Tracy? We're doing it. So I'm channeling that energy into the rose. the rose because that's what
see everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now we can be you. <laughs> Can you start again?
Sometimes we feel like it's beyond us or because of some experience that we had that it's, it's apart from us. That's just because it's unfamiliar until now. This changes everything. Whatever this quality was is yours. And not only is it yours, but this is the quality you came to bestow upon others. Can you see how that's manifesting itself in your life? How people have come into your life <coughs> and the very quality, the very thing that you needed, you requested, is something that you're able to give? That you're able to be that blessing? Whether you received it from your mother or not, you're receiving it right now from divine source. And divine source is utilizing your kindness, your heart, your spirit to bestow this upon others. Sometimes it's the very thing that we're bereft of that we came to give. Because we have to find it. We're on a quest. We search for it. And even though it might be something that we have felt that we were, we were denied or it was not fair, we didn't have that. It was the greatest gift Spirit could give you so you could seek it elsewhere. And you could find it in the eyes of someone who cares about you. Or you could find it in Holy Scripture, whatever that is for you. You could find it in the beat of a drum, the sound of a flute quietness of meditation, sacredness of prayer. Whatever it is that you sought, you have. D 
deeply within you. It's always been there. And now you recognize it. Now it's becoming awakened. Now it's alive. It's blooming within you. Now this beautiful energy permeates every cell of your body. What you thought you didn't have is now in this abundant supply for you for you to share, for you to implant in another soul, in another heart, to awaken within another. So I'd like a little feedback on that. Does anybody have a comment they'd like to share about their experience of this? This is big stuff, a lot of tears. I honor that. You know, you showed up, suited up, showed up, and did the deal. Anyone have anything they feel okay to say? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is James. For those who don't know, know me, um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, during the guided meditation, um, I uh, was walking without a head, and um, to uh, go further into that, uh, my head was in my hand. And as you said, to go walk towards my mother, I, my first knee-jerk thing was like, oh yeah, that's probably good. I'm gonna give my head back to her. <coughs> this is where the issues started, right? And um, and then I was like, oh wait, no, 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 that's not it. And then I was showing her how to give those words, those concerns, those places of, you know, depression, doubt, whatever, all those things that dwell on the head up to the creator. And, and then she was able to give her head up to the creator as well and then walk away. Um, you know, both of us walk away with that freedom. Wonderful. Yeah. And when you received the rose, were you able to access that energy that, that you saw? Yeah, but not, not in that same sense. Uh, there was like, it was, the way that it was accessed was just like this, like, you already have it. And just that, you know, being present. And uh, the gentleman that I was uh, doing the work with, like, we were just like looking into each other's eyes and just like, like be present in that moment. And, um, my card that I wanted, uh, the honoring of who I am and the honoring of who we are in that same child of I am. Because um, my, my spirit says that every child needs to be honored as Christ was when he was born. And, exactly. and that's the one thing that's been lacking. And so um, I feel like I received that. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for sharing. That was pretty powerful. Wilson. Thank you. Um, this is a question. When we share, we often receive additional insights. Thank you, Janice. That was beautiful. Uh, well, I've always had a very good relationship with my mother, so it was a very easy process for me. But one of the things that was lacking um, with my mother was um, joy. And I've been searching for joy, as you know, for a long time. My mother was very much duty-bound. And so went through that, <laughs> and then my grandmother shows up. And um, it's like joy skipped a generation because my grandmother was a very joyful, playful person. So, you know, uh, I don't know why my mother denied herself that, but she did. So, but I Well, how wonderful, what a great insight. Did you hear yourself? Your mother denied herself of that. And you felt bereft of it, but it was her denial of her own self. It, it was because she was turning her face from her mother. So what happened in that, I believe, is um, because my grandmother and I had always had a very strong connection, was that I imparted some of that to my mother. Beautiful. How we beautiful still is that? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? When I was when I was walking to the path, and you said you see flowers, different colors, but I didn't see any that flowers, but one that was blooming, and it was like I never seen a flower before. It was purple, and it's open up. It was huge. You know, like this. And I just kept on walking, and you said about see my mother at the end. I did not see her. What I saw it was like the end of the road, and I just had like a big light, like the sun was right there. And, and it was just, that was it. So she's in the light. She, that's what a soul really looks like when it's healed. 
Is your mom here in the still still living? Yeah. So you got a glimpse of what her soul looks like in its healed state. She may not be representative of that in the physical life, because none of us are. <laughs> I need to tell you that. We not we are. But that gave you a glimpse of uh, the soul, what the soul looks like in its pure pure state, without judgment, without fear, without anger. Because my word was acceptance that I was working for from her. So and that's what I get. And are you able to feel that at this point? Do you know what that feels now you can feel what that feels like? Acceptance? I can say yes. And do you find that in your world that it's been really important for you to give people acceptance? I was at the beginning, but then at the end I didn't care anymore. But my mother, yeah, I don't care what she doesn't sit for you. You've right. had to separate from that. But I mean, like, your son, you give him acceptance, do you not? You, don't you have a daughter as well? I have a son only. Just a son? Yeah. Don't, you, don't you find that it's really important for you to make sure that he knows he's accepted? Yes. Yeah. In my side, yeah, I always, you know, remind him that he, I love him. No matter what. And exactly, that's acceptance. And it's yeah. acceptance, I don't even know. What do you think the big purple flower means for you? I, I don't know, I've never seen a flower like that before. Okay, so if I might say, I want you to really check on your inside, in your core, make sure that it rings true for you. But it felt like this was evidence of your soul awakening. It was on the path. It wasn't your mom. This was you awakening in all your beauty, all your glory. And this is how God sees you and is letting you know that you are accepted by the divine source. That's, that's beautiful, amazing. Something that's never been here before. I wasn't like one of them. I saw it here. <laughs> right now, because it's like no other. Exactly. And that's how the divine source feels about you. How does that feel? I just want to share with everyone that last Sunday, Josie, she took me on a journey of serious healing with my own mother and issues of me seeing her as me and not wanting to be with her. And here today with the guided meditation, I realized that I really just wanted togetherness. And I didn't realize how much I wanted her to forgive me for running away from her and not wanting to be together with her. And it was just so beautiful to just really just feel that. You know, you're emanating peace. Isn't it? And that's, that's kind of that energy that will promote more of that togetherness. A beautiful, beautiful. It's gorgeous. Thank you for sharing. It's just gorgeous. Wow, this is like cool stuff. Well, as I walked down the path, they, I saw white flowers along the path. And then as I walked further, they started changing colors, pink and green. And then I saw a bench on the right, and my mother was sitting there, and she was crying. She was asking for my forgiveness. For forgiveness. And uh, interestingly enough, of course, that was on my card for forgiveness, understanding, and compassion. And for many years, I've been uh, very sad because my daughter, my only child, um, I have not felt that for long. So when I approached my mom, I held her and. I gave her a rose, and I forgave her, and I love her. She passed down in February. And now, as I think of my daughter, I got the knowing that all I need to do is to give her compassion and understanding and forgiveness, and that's all I need to do, and the rest will follow. Can you restate that without using the word need? Restate what? Restate that without using the word need. 
So instead of I need to give my daughter compassion, I'm now willing to, I'm not able to, and now I can. Something of that nature. What works work for you? I know that now I give my daughter compassion and understanding and just let it go. And I tap you. Could you feel it shift? Or shift yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Sometimes I'm a little diligent on that. <laughs> <laughs> diligent, yeah, it's light work, but let's work on you. In the, in the meditation, uh, I did see flowers on both sides of the path and um, uh, different colors. And then um, the, the, I really allowed myself to not think about what the word needed to be. Uh, suddenly I had a tingling in my throat, which I immediately knew was throat chakra communication issues, which is what I've had with my mother my whole life and even now. And so, um, I just knew it was communication. And knowing now that at the end we are this, I do see how much the lack of communication has inspired me to be a better communicator. And I believe that spirit is shifting things and my mother is much more open. And so I see that happening. Um, when I stood to get the rose, the, all I felt was your hands. And I was like, where did Janice go? And I was standing there and suddenly there was an angel that stepped in. And I felt, I felt, I started smelling the rose. And I was shown that the scent of the rose was bringing in the healing. And so I just stood there smelling the rose. <laughs> And then suddenly I realized, like, I should probably open my eyes now. <laughs> so that was really cool. <laughs> I was like, where'd she go? <laughs> so you awesome. needed that divine energy that transcends this physical form. And you got a full measure of how beautiful is that? That's awesome. That's wonderful. Thank you. One more back here. <laughs> Mine was, I was walking and there was flower on each side. There were the California flower, the puppies. And all I, on my guy, it was Jesus. And then as I was walking, I just saw this light and it was my mom sitting down. And that pose was on a picture that she took a long, long time ago. And she just looked glowing. She. The outfit she was wearing, it was yellow. And I already had the word, and it was love. So when I walked to her, she, cause she, she never, she was not very affectionate. I knew she loved me, um, but she never showed much affection. And when I walked to her, the first thing she said, and smiled, she said, I love you. When I walked to Christopher, all I felt was just love. Was, and it was the first time like I felt that I was in peace. Beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. What a beautiful feeling. So Mr. Phil, would you join me up front, please, dear? physical symbol <coughs> or spiritual process by which we honor connect with that divine love. So would you join us in prayer please? Loving spirit of light, thank you for the gift bestowed today. 
Thank you for <laughs> allowing us to receive. Help us to receive even more. Be more aware of this energy as it is present in our life. We ask that you walk with us in all things. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. That continues around. Would you join me there again, please? <clears throat> Loving spirit of light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in love. Help us to drink in love in all aspects. Help us to recognize it. Help us to bestow it. Help us to be it. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Eggs in the kitchen and one this blessing all the services. And also, let's just go out to West Richland to JD's to eat something. Should be interesting today, Mother's Day, but we have a whole back room to ourselves, so we get to throw food, yellow streamers. Or some gratitude in the back on the wall <clears throat> there's a little box has a candle on it uh, painted on it and you can slide your gratitudes in there and you read them when we read gratitudes uh, one person's gratitude is shared by many and that loves us all this person has a gratitude for flight let's play that one or not uh, so grateful for my loving supportive son in our times of struggle for Jordan. Way cool. I'm grateful for my trials because they strengthen me and give me a new perspective. Amen, Amen. to that. <laughs> Gratitude for my Oh, my guides and my angels, which are working overtime for me <laughs> this time. <laughs> I think a lot of us can relate to that. Yes. Um, for Taylor and Alex for making my Mother's Day the best ever. Love that. <laughs> Thank you for my God, my good friends and family and the work he does in my life. That works. To the women of the Divine Fellowship, thanks for participating so hard, hard, wholeheartedly uh, on April 30th. Yeah. We had that potluck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen to that. Thank you. That was wonderful. What a delight and a blessing it was. For everyone and everything that has shaped me to become who I am today. All right, so that one as well. Um, 
Phil has a closing song, um, so let me move some things out of the way. And let's circle them up. Yep. Check it out. You want the screen down, Mr. Phil?